picture now with Luigi Daniele. He's a senior lecturer in international humanitarian and international criminal law at Nottingham Trent University. Uh, Luigi, thank you for joining us on this news hour. Now, the UN says it's investigating the way that Israel carried out the hostage rescue mission over the weekend. They're also looking at the responsibility of Palestinian fighters in the situation. They've said holding hostages in densely populated areas like we see in Gaza puts hostages as well as Palestinians at risk. How is all of this then viewed in terms of international law? Could it all amount to war crimes, which uh, Israel is already accused of? Thank you for having me and thanks for the question. There is no doubt that under international law, the taking of hostages per se, in particular when civilians, uh, is a war crime. This doesn't mean that to rescue them, uh, other war crimes, if not crimes against humanity, can be committed. There needs always to be distinction between civilians and fighters, uh, and there needs always to be proportionality between the harm to civilians anticipated uh, and the military advantage. Uh, so, whatever is this military advantage, this has never been the case uh, in this military campaign since day one. We have witnessed uh, daily indiscriminate and disproportionate attacks on Palestinian civilians, uh, which is the reason why the Office of the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court uh, has requested arrest warrants uh, not only for the Hamas leaders, but also for the Israeli leaders uh, for both war crimes and crimes against humanity. At this point, uh, with these horrific civilian victims um, counts uh, on a daily basis, and in this occasion nearly 280 Palestinian killed, uh, we can have no doubt. This is a war that is lawlessly being fought on civilians. And while uh, it can be true in instances that conduct of Palestinian armed groups is not lawful, this doesn't authorize the attacking party to just massacre uh, an entire civilian population. Mm -hmm. uh, Luigi, the last eight months have really seen the extremes of what Gazans have experienced for years under an Israeli blockade and long before October 7th. Does this increase global attention on the Palestinian cause as well as uh, the various efforts we've seen at the International Court of Justice, at the ICC, help Palestinians, help Gazans, especially right now, given that most of this is a lot of talk and it's quite symbolic, but the action is not being taken and it's the civilians, as you say, who are paying the ultimate price. This is the key question to read all these catastrophic abyss uh, which has unraveled in front of our eyes for eight months. Uh, on the one hand, it's true. Uh, the crimes against humanity, what in my opinion constitutes a genocide, has not been stopped yet. But you have to contextualize these legal achievements uh, in decades and decades of impunity in relation to this situation, where crimes were already being committed before the 7th of October. So if we contextualize these legal responses in this broad scenario of recurrent impunity, uh, for sure there is a paradigm shift at the international level, a paradigm shift that is slowly forcing, in particular, Western Israeli allies to assume that international legality is above political discretion. It's a limit to political discretion, in particular when thousands and thousands and dozens of thousands of civilians and children are paying the most intolerable price. So these efforts need to go forward, but they are not enough. We need clearer political stances now to interrupt these atrocities before it's too late. Uh, the World Food Program and the uh, UN anticipate by mid-July more than one million Palestinians in Gaza in phase five of famine, which means that even uh, subjects that are not vulnerable will start to die because of hunger used as a weapon of war.
And that really is a frightening situation to think of. Luigi Daniele in London, thank you so much for your analysis and your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.